kind of the definitive we hope to be and what we always tried to make it as is a definitive show about this show it we we feel like we have to ask this question of why wasn't there a third season because we have to answer the question like when we're on little fan forums and they're you know and they're like oh why wasn't there a third season and we're like okay mm-hmm. so <laughs> it's a simple answer I know I know it, it really <laughs> is but people want to make I think people uh, people's head cannons start you know, I, I, running wild I I think that. The answer is complicated. It's just not as complicated as people, you know, it's not as conspiracy driven as people would like to think, but it is a complicated answer. Usually whether a show, not always, unfortunately, but usually whether a show makes it an additional season is a pretty simple mathematical equation. Did it do well? You know, how much does it cost versus how much money it's bringing in? And unfortunately for us, the answer for a spectacular Spider-Man is more complicated than that. Um, and it goes back to the fact that before Marvel was a studio, when it was just a comic book company, it would license its properties to other uh, studios. And so Sony had the license to do everything Spider-Man in entertainment. Obviously, the big ticket item for that in those days were the big Sam Raimi Spider-Man movies. Um, And we came in uh, as Sony's second animated Spider-Man show. Um, They had done a show for MTV already. And um, we came in and we were their second shot at doing Spider-Man in animation. But for Sony, the big money, obviously, was in the movies. And uh, at some point, uh, Marvel and Sony's relationship was fairly contentious, legally. Um, While we were at Sony, Marvel sued Sony three times over Spider-Man. And I don't mean over our show. I mean over the property in general. Uh, I don't know that those lawsuits ever went to court or anything like that. That's all way above my pay grade. Uh, I know that they filed. We had one part of that did affect us, our first DVD. Yeah, you're right. Um, It it did, you know, because – go ahead. That's true. Um, We had originally had plans to have – extra footage uh in that in essence each of our arcs would be edited together as a movie everyone was well aware of those plans but after the first dvd came out marvel sued sony and said you can't do this um and you can only release them yeah they said you can only release them as they aired on tv as three separate episodes so Right. So, by the way, I, I think that would make that first DVD a collector's item. If whoever has it. I've still got it. So, you know, because of all this, at some point, while we were making season two, in order to get some concession on the feature film front, Sony agreed to give the uh, animation television rights back to Marvel. Of course, by this time, Marvel was a very successful uh, producer of movies in their own right. And you have to imagine there was some quantity of frustration over the fact that, you know, they're having all this success with Iron Man and Thor and, and Captain America. And they're building towards their Avengers movies and all that stuff. And yet their one big marquee character... Spider-Man, their single biggest character that they have, they can't make a movie about. And they can't make an animated series about. So at some point, um, they got the animation rights back to uh, make Spider-Man. And that created a Catch-22 for Spectacular Spider-Man. And that Catch-22 is straightforward enough 
uh, which is that because Mar- Sony had given Marvel the rights back to do animated series for Spider-Man, Sony could no longer make Spectacular after the second season. Marvel that's, couldn't make Spectacular incredible. either. Marvel couldn't make Spectacular either because Sony owned the version of Spider-Man that was Spectacular. So the only way Marvel could make Spectacular is that they licensed the Spectacular version from Sony. And you could sit there and go, well, then why didn't they do that? And it's like, because that would have been idiotic. And it really would have been. Mm-hmm. I understand right. why for us who made the show and for fans of the show, it doesn't sound idiotic. But financially, it's idiotic. Mm-hmm. And keep in mind, these are companies that have to earn money for their shareholders. Right. Why would Marvel pay Sony, having gotten the rights back to the character, why would Marvel pay Sony to do their own character when they could just go and make their version? And I've never seen Ultimate Spider-Man. I have no opinion of it, so I know a lot of great people worked on it. But I've never seen it because there's no good news for me in watching it. If it's awful <laughs> they, and they, they had and a if it's different, great, I'd be jealous. I think they had a different directive uh, once they got the right. And they did. The they had a a different, yeah, uh, a very different direction set of animation. marching orders for what the show was going to be. Mm-hmm. And yeah. but what it, but it still comes down to the fact that Marvel had a chance to make their own Spider-Man cartoon. Yes. They wanted that, so why wouldn't they take it? Particularly if the alternative is paying Sony to do Spider-Man. Why would Marvel want yeah. Sony to do so Spider-Man? That was, so that was at that time, right? So you've explained yeah. it very detailed, but it's basically Marvel has the rights to make the Spider-Man TV show, so they wanted to make their own. So that's what it boils down to for them. But right. the question that keeps getting asked now is, could they, could the show be rebooted and brought back? What do you think, And Greg? the answer is still basically no, because it doesn't make corporate sense. Right. In essence, again, in order for Marvel to do that, they'd have to pay Sony. Mm-hmm. And that's not how it's working right now. It's actually the reverse of that. People look at the Tom Collins Spider-Man movies and go, see, they're cooperating. But what they're not getting is it's the other way around. Sony is paying Marvel Studios right. to... Uh, <laughs> Yes. To help them make Spider-Man movies with Tom Holland. Marvel is not paying Sony. Yeah. (laughs) As long as they can make money on Spider-Man without having to do the spectacular Spider-Man, they will. If if there was somehow a financial gain to do it, that's the only possibility. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, if, if there was some reason why... Literally no other Spider-Man show could ever make money. I suppose maybe, but I doubt it. But I suppose it's possible. But it, but that's a, I mean, that's a hypothetical that's so unrealistic because Spider-Man is always going to make money. And the yeah. fact of the matter is, and I know we've talked about this before, but when we were announced, before we were on the air, before anyone had seen our version of Spectacular, I got... All this, and this was pre-Twitter, you know, um, I got all this crap on the Internet over, you know, why aren't you making more MTV Spider-Mans? That show was great. And I'm looking at that. <laughs> going, okay, these, these guys are like 13, 14 years old. And then, you know, someone else picks up on that and goes, what are you talking about? That show was awful. It's the 90s Spider-Man show that was great. And those people, I'm like, okay, they're in their, they're 19, 20, 21 years old. And then someone else is going, you guys are all nuts. I know it had a silly name, but the only really good Spider-Man show that felt like Spider-Man was Spider-Man and his amazing friends. I'm like, okay, those guys are in their late 20s, early 30s. Um, and then someone else writes in and says, you're all crazy. There's only one good Spider-Man show, the only one with the good theme song, the only one that matters, and that's 
Ralph Bakshi 60s Spider-Man TV show. And I'm like, okay, that guy's my age. Uh, <laughs> and, and what that means is that, you know, when you're a kid, whatever Spider-Man show is your first great show is going to be the one that you have a passion for. Now, you can get older and then sort of look at Spectacular and go, well, you know, I really appreciate this version of the show. But there's certainly a generation for whom this was their Spider-Man show, Spectacular. And then, yes, I like to think that we were better than that and that there were plenty of people who, even though it wasn't their show generationally, it's still a show that they love and appreciate because we got to the core of the characters and the core of the concept and all that stuff that we've been talking about now for 26 episodes. But there's no doubt in my mind that there are kids for whom Ultimate was the first show that they ever saw was Spider-Man, and they're going to love that show with the kind of passion that any kid who's exposed to Spidey for the first time will have. And that's what, you know, I can look objectively at the Ralph Bakshi Spider-Man show and go, yeah, this isn't really that great, but you're never going to convince me that I don't love it because it was my Spider-Man show. <laughs> it's the one that I grew up with that first exposed me to the character even before the comic and made me want to go buy the comic. That was my Spider-Man show. And I, so, yeah, next to Spectacular, which I love for very different reasons, my second favorite Spider-Man show is the 60s Batsy Spider-Man show. I, I Because that's the one that as a kid meant something to me because it's the one that introduced me to the character. I agree to the... the the generational thing to a certain point, but just based on the fans and the critical reviews, I think, I think it's more along the lines. I think it, it was that way up until spectacular Spider-Man. It's kind of like Batman, the animated series versus the filmation Batman yes. or the other animated Batman. You know, I saw those as a kid, but I think anyone could, once they get beyond being a kid and they start uh, critically looking at, all the animated Batman, there's sort of no question, right? Uh, even though a six-year-old may like today's, you know, Justice League action version of Batman, right? But when that kid gets a little older, I think he's going to say Batman the animated series. I think it's to say, I think based on the response of the fans and uh, people who have written reviews and, and critics, I, I kind of think and hope that's the same for Spectacular Spider-Man. I hope so. I mean, we certainly set out, and Vic knows this as well as I do, we absolutely set out very clearly in our head, not that we were trying to emulate Batman the Animated Series, because they're two very different characters, two very different styles, two very different properties, but we set out really consciously, and I know I said this in interviews back in the day, to make a show that was as definitive for Spider-Man as Batman the Animated Series was for... Batman. We consciously had that in mind. And I would say at the time, look, this is a naive or an arrogant goal, but that's the goal we set for ourselves. It's for other people to judge whether we succeeded. But that was without a doubt the goal that we were trying to achieve, to create something that was so definitive that people would look back and go, this was Spider-Man. And I like to think to some extent we succeeded, and if we had gotten more seasons, I think it would have been more obvious that we were definitive than I, it is even now. But it, but it still, that doesn't change the fact, and this is what I was getting at, is that the notion of Marvel going back to spectacular with all the corporate and financial reasons not to, when they can just keep trying to make a new one, is kind of pie in the sky. Look, and, and I'm a guy who believes in bringing stuff back. Obviously, <laughs> we managed to bring back Young Justice. Right. No one thought we could do that. I still think there's a real chance of bringing back Gargoyles. I'm not yeah. saying it's a slam dunk, but I think it's a real possibility. But I look at the corporate 
contractual and financial problems was spectacular. And believe me, I'm not happy about this. It's not like I'm going, yay, we can't bring it back. I'm just <laughs> saying that the reality is I don't see a pathway to bringing spectacular back. I just don't see how it could happen. I'd love to be proven wrong. Don't believe me. <laughs> but, I, I mean, I would love for Vic and I to – get a call and have Marvel say, guys, we want to bring back Spectacular or Sony or whoever. Disney, you know, calling us and saying that. But I don't see a realistic pathway to that. Uh, and I wish I was, I, I would, again, love to be proven wrong. I hope I am wrong. But I, I think all people want to I lie think one, to I think, fans. I think one other possible pie in the sky is yeah, you can't literally pick up with episode twenty seven, same exact character design, everything, and it call, be called the spectacular Spider Man. But the other pie in the sky is another Spider Man series. It's all the same. Yeah, I mean characters. they could they could call you us know? up and say, Hi, we'd like to hire you guys to do a Spider Man series. Can't be spectacular, but we'll hire you. And we'll go. Yeah, we won't be called it, but we, uh, we'll we, hire Doc we could to play Spider-Man. I mean, at, at some could. point, it becomes this sort of lawyerly question of how close can we get without going over the line and get <laughs> getting sued, <laughs> you know? And uh, and I'm I'm game. If Marvel wants to give me a call, they can give me a call. But I'm not holding my breath either. And the thing I really want to say here, because this is what. This, Greg is right. This week I got kind of hammered on Twitter, um, <laughs> and it was just mind-boggling. Um, but the thing I want to say, other than the fact is that it's not like I'm happy about this. This is just a situation. It's that I was actually kind of being attacked for not lying to the fans, for not um, giving them <laughs> false hope. It was like, why are you raining on my parade? Why are you, you know, being such a jerk about this? And I'm like, so uh, you'd rather I lie to you? Um, <laughs> That's amazing. Oh. Uh, and I guess sometimes the answer to that question on the Internet is, yeah, lie to me, please. <laughs> it's worked for the president. Why won't you do it? <laughs> Well, the, 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 answer, the answer that's always the answer for that on the Internet is unlikely. That's really the answer. Oh, yeah, well, yeah. And, and look, may I, I, I mean, may... at one point two weeks ago, uh, someone said, tweeted something nice about Spectacular, and I responded with a smiley face. Not a winky face, keep in mind, a smiley face. And I got 60,000 tweets in response saying, what does that mean? Uh, does that mean it's coming back? I'm like, no. And they're like, why did you get our hopes up? I'm like, I didn't. That's on you. I'm sorry. I, I was just glad that someone said something nice about Spectacular. That wasn't meant to imply anything. And the fact that you interpreted a smiley face as a hint that we were coming back is ridiculous. Um, wow. You know, it's, oh, man. Uh, I, I'm going to interject briefly and just say something. I've noticed you did not mention Disney in any of this, and that is because, as most people know, Disney, the Disney buyout happened after the animation rights were handed back. I found for years on the internet that Disney is this easy villain to blame for everything, even though that is very often, sometimes, very often not the case. Maybe because they're just gigantic global conglomerate so they make it so it's a juicy talking point but it's usually bs and i say this as someone who is a huge fan of a certain disney property which i wish had gotten treated a little bit better but i also understand the realities of why things went the way they did well and and look, I mean, I, look it's easy to make disney a bill and i agree with you i uh, i think that uh, it's almost funny to make Disney a villain. Um, I had a lot of good years at Disney. Um, and, uh, you know, Disney's also done some things that I don't love here and there. But you're absolutely right. All this stuff that I'm talking about went down 
just before the Disney buyout of Marvel. And so all of this would have happened whether or not Disney bought Marvel. Now, what, uh, what is true is that Disney buying Marvel then complicated things even more. Mm-hmm. Um, but the fundamental problem of Marvel owning Spider-Man and Sony owning Spectacular doesn't change whether or not Disney owns Marvel. That fundamental catch-22 is still there. Right. And and so you can be mad at Disney in the sense that you're mad at Marvel, I suppose, but there's not much reason to be mad at Marvel or Disney or Sony for that matter. Yeah. It's yeah. just as an unfortunate result of a corporate thing. Yeah. And, and, and you know, uh, without Marvel, we would never would have had Spectacular. Without Sony, we never would have had Spectacular. Without Disney, we wouldn't have had any, anywhere to air the second season of Spectacular. And you never would have seen season two even. So mm-hmm. it, it's sort of ridiculous to get mad at any of these organizations because it's not that they're perfect. It's not that they're awful. It's not either of those things. It's just that... The problem with Spectacular has nothing to do with personality. It has nothing to do with conspiracy theories. It just has to do with uh, a corporate negotiation that happened to catch Spectacular in the switches. And it's a bummer. Don't get me wrong. I'm not glad about it. (laughs) Um, Hell, I was out of, you know, I lost a job. You guys lost a show. Vic and I got... Let Fire. go because there was yeah. no show for us to do. Right. Um, but but it, it isn't a uh, it isn't an issue of villain, you know. It just isn't. Uh, 